Hi, it's Katrina. Sharks are very misunderstood, but we are learning new things about them all the time. From the longest living vertebrates to some bizarre behavior, here are eight things we have recently learned about sharks. Number eight, the oldest living vertebrate. Do you know what the longest living vertebrate is? Now we have the answer. Scientists confirmed in a 2016 study that the Greenland shark is not only the longest living shark species, it has the longest lifespan of all known vertebrates. Some of these deep water fish are believed to be over 400 years old, making them older than many countries, including the United States. If this estimate is in fact true, it means that Greenland sharks can live more than twice as many years as the next longest living vertebrates which are bowhead whales, rough-eye rockfish, and certain tortoise species who have a lifespan of up to two centuries. The scientists who conducted the research used radiocarbon dating on the eye lenses of 28 female Greenland sharks and determined that the species can live for at least 272 years, and probably much longer. Before this study, experts struggled to determine the shark's potential lifespan due to their lack of calcium-rich bones, which are ideal for radiocarbon dating, and because of the animal's remote habitat of the freezing Arctic and North Atlantic waters. The Greenland shark's lifestyle as a cold-blooded deepwater species likely contributes to its lengthy lifespan due to the natural slowing of its metabolism in its frigid environment, as slow metabolic rates are correlated with longevity. The general rule is that deep and cold equals old, says Chris Lowe, a shark biologist at the California State University at Long Beach. In other words, it's not surprising to scientists that Greenland sharks live long lives, it's just surprising how incredibly long they can live. Fun fact, sharks have been around for a very long time, almost 450 million years. In comparison, dinosaurs didn't appear until 230 million years ago. Number 7. Strange Reproductive Methods Chimeras, also known as ratfish or ghost sharks, are very rare sharks found in the deep sea. Chimeras have been around for an estimated 280 million years and are distantly related to sharks and rays. Given their obscure presence, scientists know very little about them. In a 2017 study of two ghost shark species caught off the coast of New Zealand, the black ghost shark and the brown chimera, researchers examined hundreds of dead specimens at various stages of sexual maturity, including fish that were hauled up in bottom trawls and remains owned by museums. They learned that the bizarre-looking fish have equally strange reproductive systems. Males possess retractable hooked sex organs on their heads, which are thought to be used to clutch to females during mating. Biologist and study leader Britt Finucci from the Victoria University of Wellington in New Zealand pointed out that this does not seem to be a very pleasant experience for the females. Luckily, female ghost sharks appear to be able to wait until the right time to actually conceive after mating, thanks to a special storage bank in their bodies that enables them to store sperm for years. This trait likely helps the species survive in the deep ocean, where food sources and mates are often difficult to find. Around 40% of known ghost shark species have only been discovered in the past 17 years or so, meaning scientists have a lot more to learn about these elusive and eccentric creatures. Number 6. Buzz Sharks in Idaho The extinct Helicoprion, or buzzsaw shark, was an ancestor of the modern-day ghost shark. The buzzsaw shark swam in the Earth's water some 270 million years ago and was the world's largest predator at the time. This massive and intimidating creature possessed up to 150 razor-sharp teeth and a whorl or a spiral-shaped jaw that confused researchers and was misclassified by paleontologists for over a century before they finally figured it out. It took some more time after that for them to determine its purpose. A 2013 study published in the journal Biology Letters concluded that the whorl jaw worked as a sort of tooth factory, rotating forward as new teeth were continuously created. Meanwhile, the old teeth at the front of the mouth formed a spiral pattern as they curled inward and tucked into the shark's lower jaw. In June of last year, the Idaho Museum of Natural History became the proud owner of a fossilized set of these terrifying teeth, measuring over 8 inches in diameter, a size that indicates the buzzsaw shark may have grown up to 25 feet long. The fossil was discovered at a Monsanto mine within the state. Idaho is the best place on the planet to find these amazing fossils, according to Leif Tapanila, the director of the Idaho Museum of Natural History and a professor at Idaho State University and a co-author of the 2013 study. So if anyone knows what they're talking about, he does. 
And now for what happened to the Megalodon. But first, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and let me know your favorite kind of shark in the comments below. Number 5. Who Wiped Out the Megalodon? Any shark enthusiast out there has heard of the Megalodon, a supermassive, extinct shark species that grew up to 60 feet long and lived millions of years ago. Scientists have struggled to determine why this gargantuan predator went extinct, but may have recently come one step closer to figuring it out, according to findings published earlier this year. A paper in the February 13 issue of the journal Pier J explained that researchers may have miscalculated the megalodon's extinction by one million years based on re-examinations of fossil records in California, USA and Baja California, Mexico. The dating methods normally used by scientists may have been compromised by the shifting of the fossils within the surrounding rock. If the megalodon died out 3.6 million years ago, as opposed to 2.6 million years ago, the original scientific estimate, this means that they weren't part of a mass extinction that occurred during that time, as previously thought. So who wiped them out? The new study suggests that they were outcompeted by the smaller, savvier great white shark, which came to exist around 4 million years ago, just 400,000 years prior to the megalodon's revised extinction date. Study author and paleontologist Robert Boesenecker of the College of Charleston said in a statement, We propose that this short overlap was sufficient time for great white sharks to spread worldwide, thus driving the megalodon to extinction. Number 4. Leaping Sharks in September 2018, a new study found that basking sharks, second largest in size only to whale sharks, can leap out of the water as quickly and as high as great whites. The researchers found that basking sharks are unhindered by their up to 33-foot-long bodies when it comes to making Olympic-worthy jumps. They swim at speeds of up to 11 miles per hour and can leap as high as 4 feet above the water's surface. These findings were determined based on extensive video footage analysis of basking sharks breaching. Despite these amazing capabilities, the recent research did not result in any new discoveries in the basking shark's behavior. Unlike the aggressive great white, who leaps at a similar height, the basking shark is a gentle giant that feeds primarily on zooplankton, according to Jonathan Houghton, the study's senior researcher and a senior lecturer in marine biology at Queen's University in Belfast, Ireland. Scientists have yet to determine why basking sharks breach, but they believe the behavior could be a mating display, a way to indicate nearby prey or evade predators, or a show of dominance. Number 3. We share a common ancestor. As crazy as this statement definitely sounds, it's true. The split between sharks and human ancestors occurred around 440 million years ago during the Silurian period. Scientists figured this out by studying the remains of a 385 million year old shark, which lived during the Devonian period, a time during which creatures first moved onto land. The 2.6-foot-long shark, named Gladbacchus adentatus, was essentially flattened to death and was found in Germany in 2001. It's one of the oldest known and best-preserved examples of a fossilized shark. Although the shark was originally described in 2001, it was re-examined in 2018 by Michael Coates, a professor in the Department of Organismal Biology and Anatomy at the University of Chicago and his colleagues. They determined that the shark represents a side shoot from the base of the shark family tree, giving the researchers access to new information about the diversity of early sharks. From that discovery, the scientists learned that there are many branches to shark evolution. In Coates' words, several lineages of the earliest sharks converged on what we now recognize as classic shark-like features, such as having a long throat with multiple gill slits. This finding disproves earlier notions that multiple gill slits were a primitive feature of sharks. Amazingly, the researchers also determined that humans and sharks shared a common ancestor at least 440 million years ago. This builds on previous knowledge that mammals, including humans, were spawned from a lineage of vertebrates that started with bony fishes. Sharks are more cartilage than bone, meaning that at some point they diverted from the creatures that became vertebrates, and the recent study gave scientists a better understanding of when this split may have occurred. Bizarre, but true. Number 2 they may become right or left-handed. The predicted eventual effects of climate change stand to leave virtually no life form unchanged, including sharks. 
In a December 2018 article for Live Science, writer Brandon Spector reported that global warming may cause sharks to become lateralized, which means the tendency for one half of a creature's brain to automatically control certain behaviors. This enables the brain to perform more complex cognitive functions, in other words, to focus on more complicated tasks. A team of biologists from Macquarie University in Australia collected a clutch of shark eggs off the country's eastern coast. They incubated 12 of the eggs in a tank adjusted to the current temperature of the waters they were found in, and 12 others in a special tank simulating the hot conditions that are predicted to occur if climate change is not addressed effectively in the near future. Within a month, five of the sharks from the warmer tank died, and the rest became right-handed, or right-finned, I should say. Meanwhile, the sharks raised in the so-called normal tank showed no preference for direction. This research, which was published last summer in the journal Symmetry, builds on previous knowledge that the way fish grow and develop is affected by rising ocean temperatures. The goal of the Australian scientists was to see if animal behavior is also affected by these conditions, including whether sharks have a preference for which way to swim when encountering a Y-shaped path. An automatic preference for swimming a certain way may free up room in a fish's brain to better form schools or forage for food. Number 1. Harmful Plastic Waste Sharks are one of several often overlooked marine species whose survival is threatened by pollution. Thousands of sharks and rays are suffering as a result of the overwhelming presence of plastic waste throughout the world's waterways. In a study recently published in the journal Endangered Species Reports, scientists documented over 1,000 incidents of sharks and rays becoming entangled in plastic debris. They estimate that the actual numbers of such occurrences are much higher. This is particularly bad news for sharks and rays because according to the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, they are at higher risk of extinction than many other species. While overfishing is the main threat to these marine animals, plastic pollution undoubtedly contributes to the endangered status of sharks. Over the course of his career, marine biologist Daniel Abel of Coastal Carolina University has seen firsthand a lot of the damage done to sharks by plastics. For example, while conducting research in Winya Bay, South Carolina in 2016, Abel and his students rescued a sandbar shark that was caught in packaging twine. The shark's body had been sliced entirely around by the ring of twine. Luckily, the shark survived. Abel appropriately described the incident as abhorrent. He explained that if another month or two had passed without the shark being discovered, the twine would have slowly and painfully cut it in half. Scientists only recently began focusing on how sharks are affected by plastic pollution, but mitigating the harm caused by plastics to all ocean life comes down to making the necessary changes in human activities, including the widespread reduced use of single-use plastic items, such as water bottles, plastic bags, and straws. Remember, just one person can make a difference to help protect marine life. Thanks for watching! To learn more, check out Shark Week on the Discovery Channel and other shark videos coming up here. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Bye!